Thank Senator you, Roberts. Thank you for uh, joining us tonight. And welcome, Dr. Hilton. Uh, I am going to put some questions on notice with regard to carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere and from human production uh, in the interest of time, as the Chair mentioned. I'd like to ha have um, the experts or the, the expert or spokesman on gen cost. Sure. Just one moment. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was paying attention. Hi. Yeah. Would you like me just to begin? Um, so we're really delighted you're asking questions about Gen Cost Sounder. Um, we think that the, one of the greatest challenges facing Australia is the transition of our energy sector, and I'm really proud of the contribution that the Gen Cost report makes in this area. As you know, the report's been generated annually since 2018. Um, it's evolved over time to take account of changing technology landscape and the availability of new data, and I anticipate that the report will continue to evolve. Um, and Thank we'll you. be pleased to take your questions. Thank you. I've just got some quick questions to go through. I just want to get at the heart of some of the, the issues that I see with GenCost. Do you know what the cost of pumped hydro energy storage, Snowy 2, was first budgeted as? Uh, Paul Graham, uh, Chief Economist, Energy Business Unit. Um, Senator, I might take that on notice because I'm, I'm aware of the recent update to the cost, but I don't have the original figure. The on original it. figure was $2 billion. Do you know what it's currently budgeted at? Senator, I believe it's in the order of $12 billion. That's correct. Do you know how long the tunnels are for it? Senator, no, I don't have that on hand. 27 kilometres. Do you know how much of the tunnel they've bored? So far in the last, I think it's just over a year. Senator, no, I'm not tracking that. 150 project. metres. It's been bogged for about a year. Do you know when it was initially scheduled for completion? Senator, no, I don't have that on, on 2021. Do you know when? Do you know when that's blown out to now? Uh, Senator, I, I, I feel like I should know it around 2029, something like that. Earlier, Senator, 2028. Senator, I think the official is indicating to you that, um, you know, he's, he's happy to accommodate your line of questioning, but these, are, these really detailed questions about the project details for Snowy Hydro are best dealt with in the environment estimates, and I know that you did, in fact, address some of these kinds of questions to Mr Barnes, the, the CEO of, of Snowy. So I, I just wonder if you might uh, direct questions to, to CSIRO that they can assist with, and in particular, <coughs> um, you indicated about the Gen Cost report. I, I wonder if that might... You might get a yeah, sure. better answer from the official. Sure. They're now estimating the cost of the transmission infrastructure, which was left out of the original package, uh, at $10 billion for, to, for it to be connected to the grid and to actually be useful. So that's making it now up to $22 billion for 2,200 megawatts of pumped hydro energy storage, which is $10 million per megawatt or $10,000 per kilowatt. We won't even get into the fact that it's only forecast to put out that capacity for an average of 26 minutes a day. What's the cost per kilowatt of pumped hydro you've provided in gen cost? Uh, the Senator, to answer that question, it's probably for, uh, first a good idea to acknowledge that um, the Snowy 2.0 project is, is incredibly unique. It's, um, it's of the order of approximately 170 hours uh, duration um, for, I believe it was originally going to be 2 gigawatts, but I now think it's higher than that now, maybe 2.2, 2.5. 2.2. There really isn't any other project on the books in Australia that we're looking at that has that type of profile. Uh, what we do in Gen Cost is we report um, pumped hydro projects more in the order of sort of 12, 48 hours, that kind of duration, which is nowhere near the sort of 170 hours um, for Snowy 2.0. So I guess I just want to... So what's your capacity, sorry? Not... So get... what, what was your capacity? Uh, so we have a table uh, in GenCost where we um, we have a series of figures on the cost of pumped hydro. I'll just get the exact data for you. Um, uh, 
Are you asking what role Mr Graham performs in... No, no, no. What, what is the cost per kilowatt hour of uh, pumped hydro you've provided in GenCost? So it seems I didn't bring that table with me, but essentially it's... Um, um, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on notice, but I guess I just wanted Without to make it clear that that cost isn't really related to Snowy 2.0. They're related to other projects which are much smaller. Yeah, um, that, that's what, what I understand. Uh, gen cost, what would it be roughly? I won't hold you to it, but just roughly. I think it's of the order of 2,500 a kilowatt. Okay. Um, Snowy 2, which is a, a real-life project uh, that's not even finished yet, is 10,000. So what my point is that we have got, as I understand it, gen cost is built on modelling based on assumptions projected out to the future. Is that correct? That's In broad correct. terms? Thank you. Um, we don't know from gen cost what it would cost to replace our coal-fired fleet with solar and wind today and all the transmission lines and all of the backup storage. How useful is gen cost? Uh, so we made the decision to focus gen cost on new build generation uh, and storage and some hydrogen technologies. Um, there are other processes for and, and reports that deal with transmission, uh, so that we don't deal with transmission. So we can certainly, uh, gen cost is certainly designed for people to go and calculate what is the cost of building and replacing uh, existing generation, but you can't go to GenCost necessarily to look at issues around transmission. Right, uh, and some of your opponents argue that GenCost is detached from reality. We look at Snowy 2, and I'm not in, in, uh, implying you've got anything to do with Snowy 2, but right from the start, Snowy 2, Minister, was built, the decision to build Snowy 2 was given without as a cost-benefit analysis with a heavily redacted business case that could not be, could not be scrutinised. So what I'm saying is that you're, you've acknowledged that you're basically building models based on assumptions and projecting it into the future. I don't think the government has got anything of what's going on right now. Is that right, Minister? Uh, Senator Roberts, I think that you've mis um, it, perhaps I might get the official to revisit the evidence he's just provided about the way that calculations are developed sure. for understanding the cost of hydro because I, I, I don't think it's as you've described. Minister, we've got um, major solar and wind installations, industrial complexes that are not connected to the grid. This is the level of planning that's going on at state and federal. They're not connected, but, but they've been paid for, and I think that they're earning revenue. Uh, Senator, that, that's, Senator that's Roberts, a reality. I, I'm not aware of the particular um, projects that you're referring to, but they're certainly not um, things that this agency can assist you with. I guess my question to you is something that's projected into the future based on models and assumptions now is divorced from reality. We need to know the cost now. And what I'm saying to you is, why are you building this, why are we embarking on this journey with such little certainty, so much, so much uncertainty? Uh, Senator Roberts, I think you're asking me about energy policy, um, and we have talked about it earlier in the week. Um, we do consistently have advice um, from a very wide range of sources about Could you name some of them? firmed renewables being the lowest cost form of new energy in the Australian context. Um, and when AEMO looks at what's required to replace all of the um, thermal generation that's coming to the end of its life uh, over the next decade, then they try and model, because they need to, uh, the transmission that will optimally connect the optimal configuration of new generation. And that's that AEMO work. It's, it's not um, principally led by CSIRO, so I have a capacity to contribute and, and, and I think the official can speak to the ways that they do. But I don't wish to frustrate your efforts to have this discussion, but it's really not in this portfolio. So, 
Thanks, Minister, and uh, thank you, Chair. That's my 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Authorised Malcolm Roberts, Brisbane.